What's up guys, I'm Rhett. Welcome back to Lawn Insider. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Bermuda grass. It is Saturday, June 4th, and we are rolling right through the lawn season. And for those of us that are educators, we just started summer break, so naturally everybody's excited about that. But we've been working out here in the yard, already had our fair share of trials and tribulations, and a lot of those are not unique to Bermuda, but several of them have been. So it got me to think, and I wanted to go ahead and make a video where I talk about some of the things that I really love about Bermuda, some of the things that I don't necessarily like, and then a few things that are just plain ugly. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing in the good column, and probably the aspect of Bermuda that I enjoy the most, is that it likes to be mowed low. And as long as you're putting in the work and you have the proper equipment, you can get that golf course lawn look that everybody's after. So I maintain my Bermuda just a hair over a half inch, and you can tell that it's basically just a thick green carpet. The next good thing on the list for Bermuda is that it's tough and it can repair itself. So if you looked at my backyard right now, you'd probably have a hard time believing that I actually had two dogs if you didn't see one up there in the distance. But when we were coming out of winter dormancy, this area in front of the porch right here was actually riddled with bare spots that were caused by dog pee damage. And you can see that now the Bermuda has pretty much filled in all of those spots. Now we do still have a few new spots when you see these little yellow dots in the grass, that is dog pee damage, but those will also fill in in due time. So let me go ahead and show you the growth pattern of Bermuda and how it's able to repair itself so effectively. So this area right here is a spot where Finn always likes to use the bathroom and it's a bare spot naturally. But what I wanted you to see was this piece right here. So this is a great example of what a Bermuda grass stolen or runner looks like. And that's how they grow. They're going to shoot out horizontally across the turf and they're wanting to tack down into the soil and take over new territory. And that's how they fill in weak spots. And that's why you don't have to overseed weak spots in Bermuda because Bermuda is going to do all that hard work for you. And that's why sports fields down here in the South, like golf courses and baseball fields, football fields, are usually going to be Bermuda if they are natural grass because of those self-healing properties. The last thing I'm adding to the good column for this video is that Bermuda grass is heat tolerant, drought tolerant, and disease tolerant. And we're gonna need it because over the summer in Texas, we hit triple digits a lot and I'm pretty sure that most cities are probably already under drought restrictions for their irrigation systems, and we can only water one day a week. The first thing going in the bad column is that it's not shade tolerant, and I know that's gonna prevent a lot of people from having it in their yard right off the bat. The last bad thing going on the list, and this one's kind of up for debate because some people might really enjoy this aspect of Bermuda grass, myself included, but Bermuda is super labor intensive. And that starts out from the very beginning of the year when we have to scalp our lawns when other grass types don't. But in my opinion, to have a really nice Bermuda lawn that stands out in the neighborhood, it's gonna require more time in the lawn and more lawn maintenance than any other grass type. And we're gonna finish off here going over two things I think are ugly in our Bermuda lawns. And the first thing is seed heads. And seed heads like to show up when there's some sort of stress in the lawn. In this case, this is the spot where they're most prevalent for me. And I think it's just because this area is probably dry. We haven't been getting a whole lot of rain lately. And whenever you mow over seed heads, the reel or the blade of your mower is probably gonna have a harder time mowing over those areas. And when it does cut through them, you're gonna get kind of a white haze in that area. And this is what a seed head in a shortcut reel mode lawn is gonna look like. Okay, so they adapt and they start growing laterally. And then over here, we can see what seed heads look like in my neighbor's taller cut Bermuda grass. And I'll go ahead and that is what they look like in tall Bermuda. And the second thing I think is ugly about Bermuda grass are the scalp marks. So only about the top third of a Bermuda plant is actually green. And then if you cut underneath that, let's say you hit an uneven spot in your lawn and your mower rocks a little bit and it cuts down a little deeper, it's really easy to get into that yellow part of the turf. And Bermuda is not very forgiving when you make a mistake. It lets everybody know 
that you scalped in that area. Well, there you have it. Those are my good, bad, and ugly sides of Bermuda grass. If you have anything you'd like to add or anything you disagree with, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. If you like the video, go ahead and leave me a like. If you're enjoying the content and you want to continue to see more of it, hit the red subscribe button below. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the comment section below. I'll see y'all again next week. Lawn Insider, out.